Hi all, uh, this video takes uh, a quick look at activating and using the ZMF event server. In an earlier video we saw how to install the software needed to enable the facility to send requests inbound to ZMF using REST API calls. The same software installation also enables ZMF to send notifications of events outbound to processes which have uh, subscribed to these events. This video concentrates on that outbound traffic. We start by connecting to our 8.2 patch 2 or later ZMF subsystem. And for this exercise, we need to be a global administrator. So we're going to go into administration and global. And there's a new feature in the global admin for the event and REST API servers. Uh, and this is all there is to it. It's not particularly complicated. Um, the first field is the Tomcat started task procedure name. If the relevant Tomcat servlet is not detected during ZMF startup, then ZMF is going to issue a start command for this procedure. The next two fields are, are passed to job skeletons and HLL exits as variables so that the job steps and the exit code can contact the server. Um, the contexts, um, these identify the, the Tomcat servlets which will handle outbound event notifications and inbound API calls. So event server outbound, rest server inbound um, for this particular ZMS subsystem. The values you see there are, are the defaults, but you can use any name and you will probably want to use different names to support multiple ZMS subsystems, for example, several test subsystems using the same Tomcat started task. The option flags will direct ZMF to look for the presence of the relevant Tomcat servlet at startup. And if missing, we'll issue the start command as mentioned for the procedure name above. They also set ISPF variables and uh, HLL exit rex variable values, which uh, enable the event notification process uh, as we'll see presently. Finally, if you want ZMF to implement these settings immediately, rather than next time ZMF starts up, the, then use the apply saved admin settings option. Um, values are, are saved and acted on if you use the apply setting when you leave this panel via end or usual pf3 in order for zmf processes to actually emit an event that event must have at least one subscriber the file tailoring and hll exit drivers will check for event subscriptions and will set variables accordingly as there's no point in emitting an event if there's no subscribers for it a later video will go into more detail about event subscriptions, but um, let's have a quick look at, at what's involved just to set the scene. OK, so this is the um, event server subscription um, application. You can see up here that this is the address we're going in. This is Tomcat listening on 8180 as configured earlier. Uh, the context is EMF event. And uh, here we are at the config home panel. So the first thing we need to do is log in, and that's to identify ourselves and validate our user ID. Um, this is our mainframe user ID. So let's go ahead and do that. That's my user ID. Put my password in. And that's me in. And now all the other options have become green. I can actually do these things. So um, let's have a quick look at list the events that are available. There are quite a few. Um, from package back out, package install, all the major uh, points within a ZMF lifecycle uh, and others. Um, this all the way down to here to I think event 101 is the is the latest is the highest number. You can uh, subscribe to one or more of these events, and each event can be subscribed to by one or more external process. We'll have a quick look at how that's done just now. Uh, in this particular setup, we have uh, subscribed to two events. So if I list the subscribers, we'll see those two. Uh, and we'll see that event 
40 is package freeze uh, and event 100 is component pre-build. Um, all these uh, event IDs are, are uh, listed, documented in the in the getting started guide. Okay, so let's have a look at one of these events. We'll look at uh, event 100, component pre-build. Uh, and if we edit it, we can see what the subscription looks like. As mentioned, I'll leave the details of uh, how to subscribe to another video, but the important piece to see here is the subscriber URL. When ZMF emits the event, it contacts the Tomcat event servlet, which in turn sends an HTTP request to this URL. As you can see here, this one is this one in particular is set up to content contact a Jenkins machine or Jenkins process. And we can also see uh, a bit lower down here, we can see there are three different um, em emission sources, so to speak. Um, we have HLLX, where the event is emitted from uh, a high level language exit. We have scales, where a an event is emitted from a batch job step, which is far tailored into the standard set of um, jobs that CMF produces. Uh, and we have the log source, which is like uh, log scraping. The ZMF log records all these events anyway, and sometime after the fact, um, we will get a, a notification that the event has emitted. Um, in this particular one, this uh, event 100 component pre-build, we want to submit a batch job, which will send off event 100 as part of its process. So this one, we're using scale source true. But as I say, the, all the rest of this stuff will be uh, gone into in much more detail in a subsequent video. At this point, it's probably worth thinking about what kind of user experience you're going to put in place here. The call to the event server will, will wait until the event server returns an HTTP code. You could ask for some long running remote process to execute and wait for the result. In a scale driven event, this means the batch job will sit waiting for the result, which is not usually a major problem. However, if you did the same thing for an HLL exit, then that delay will cause the ZMS session to be hung uh, and will lead to user frustration. So probably best to use HLL exit event emission as a means of notifying some external process that something has happened without waiting for anything to be returned from that external process. HLL exit sample code is provided and the documentation suggests that it is placed in the post service exit. Of course, you can put it anywhere you like. It's up to you what you put in your exit code. But be careful of causing untenable delays. OK, so so here we have a, a scale um, event emission. Um, and uh, the skeletons delivered in ZMF 8.2 patch 2 and later uh, are set up to automatically generate the relevant job step, but only for events which are subscribed to, and only for those events listed in the documentation as scale supported. The job submission process is no different than normal. So let's take a look at, the, at a build job which shows the event 100 submission. Okay, so this is a, a, a job that's been far tailored to um, compile a source component and uh, event 100 as we've seen uh, is activated is subscribed to um, and it it is inserted as the first step because it's the pre-build event emission it's the first step in this build job and the way it's implemented from the batch JCL is via a utility CMN URI BA uh, there's several parts to this, uh, but the, the, the major bits are here. The, the JSON body, which is passed across on the event emission to the event server, contains a whole bunch of uh, standard variables, which are the ones that are relevant are then passed on to the subscriber uh, by the event server. And then we have some information for the, the batch job itself as to um, how to contact the event server. So these are the val values that we saw in admin that get passed through as ISPF variables to the file tailoring process. Um, some events such as this one, you may wish to wait for output to come back from the uh, remote process. 
and indeed it comes back as, as a JSON body. So we have a, an extra step here, pretty print step, which will take the JSON body and will format it for display uh, in a more readable format than just the raw data. And, and that's all there is to it really. Um, for each uh, scale event, which is subscribed to, you will find a step being file tailored added to your generated job, be that a, a source component compile or a promotion job or, or an installation job or whatever. So the, the other uh, dynamic way of emitting events is via HLL exit. So let's have a, a quick look at that. Um, we provide samples. It's, it's slightly different to the um, the scales. In the scales we can actually uh, out of the box produce these job steps in the file tailoring process. With HLL exits, the exit the exits themselves are yours. They're your code. So we just provide samples for you to include into um, into your exits. And these are all the um, sample code for the for the various HLL exit functional areas. Uh, for, from which events can be emitted. Um, and we saw earlier that we were subscribed to event 40, which is part of freeze. So, so this is the sample for freeze. Uh, and we can see some displays just to see what's going on. And, and here we see um, the uh, specific variables that are passed by ZMF as part of the, the event emission. So whether it's active or not, the, the address of the server, the port that's listing on and the context to use when contacting the Tomcat servlet. But the actual event emission is pretty much the same as the batch job step. We, we give the, the um, utility that we're calling, in this case, it's CMN URI RX. It's really just a, a wrapper around CMN URI BA so that we can pass information from a Rex exec. And we pass the information about how to contact the um, event server uh, with the variables that are set up by ZMF for HLLX to use. And we pass the information that we want to pass to a particular event. So in this case, we've got a few variables there to get passed through to the event server, which similar to the way that the scales work, once the event server gets this information, it then contacts the, the subscriber's URL and passes these parameters to it for action. And hopefully that's been a useful introduction to um, the way that the ZMF event server works. As I say in a later video, um, the subscription process will be gone into in much more detail. For now, thanks for listening.